Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's program. The agitation for a referendum of Biafra has remained a topic of discussion amongst Nigerians, particularly those in the southeast. President Muhammadu Buhari categorically stated to the Osato Show during the 2016 United Nations General Assembly in New York that no such referendum will occur under his administration. He further elaborated that Nigeria is one country and will remain as such. In this episode, we learn more about the history of Biafra and pay a visit to the War Museum located in Umayyah, the capital of Abia State located in the southeast part of Nigeria. Take a look. My name is Mrs. Peace Otumbadi, Chief Museum Education Officer. You are welcome. This is National War Museum Omaha. The idea of having a war museum in this country was mooted by T. Y. Danjuma after his official visit to Yugoslavia in the year 1977. When he came back to Nigeria, he presented the idea to the Army Ruling Council. An approval was given to it, and Omaha was chosen as a place where the war museum would be located because of the two well preserved bunkers in Omaha used during the Civil War in Nigeria. The bunkers are Ojuku Bunker and Voice of Biafra Bunker. The Voice of Biafra Bunker is inside these premises, but the Ojuku Bunker is at Akbar Avenue. The Voice of Biafra Bunker is where Ojuku and Okoko them stays and tell the whole world how the war was going on. But the Ojuku Bunker was constructed when Enugu fell. When Enugu fell, Biafrans moved their state capital to Omaha. Dr. Michael Akbara donated his personal building to Bia France, and the Bia France used that building as their state house. Now, immediately, Omaha became the Bia France state capital. There was bombing all over Omaha. For security reasons, a bunker was constructed adjacent to that state house given to them by Dr. Michael Akbara. Another reason why Omaha was chosen as a place where the war museum will be located is Omaha was the last capital of Bia France government. This museum was built for the purpose of preserving Nigeria war relics, to serve as a center for information on Nigeria warfare as a research in institution. This museum is also a tourist center. Now in this museum, we have three different galleries and also open a museum. The National War Museum of Maya was opened to the public on 15th January, 1985. The Civil War Gallery, before you move inside that Civil War Gallery, we are going to see the casualties of the first coup. The coup that took place 15th January 1966. The leader of that coup was Chukuma Kaduna Zogo. And we have the casualties like Tafa Balewa, Ahmed Ubelo, Okote Bora of Sotende, Adem Bulegun, and so on and so forth. Now, that coup was one of the remote causes of the civil war. After that coup, we have the photographs of the Encanta coup which took place the same year, 1966. Then after that coup, we have the civil war in Nigeria, which took place July 1967 and ended January 1970. The war lasted for two years and six months. Then as I go inside that bunker, that is the last gallery, the VOB, Voice of Biafra Bunker, there we are going to see in photographs what happened during the civil war in Nigeria. At our right hand side were those who fought for Nigeria, and at our left hand side were those who fought for Biafra. You see uh, Yakubu Gowan at our right hand side as the leader of Biafra, Nigeria. Then Odimo Gojuku as the leader of Biafra during the Civil War. Then when we go down, we're going to see 
pictures taken while the war was going on. We call it scenes from the battles from both sides. Then after that, we are going to see uh, the effect of the Civil War. One of the reasons why this museum was built is for us to come and see the negative impact of the Civil War. War is not good in any angle you, you, you look at it. There we are going to see Kwashiorkor victims. Children suffering from Kwashiorkor as a result of malnutrition. Then you see the, how the soldiers are being treated during the war. We equally see foreigners who participated one way or the other during the Civil War. You see the end of the war. All in photographs. Nigerian soldier, Biafran soldier embracing themselves. Mark of joy that the war has ended. Then you probably see the remains of the transmitter used by Biafrans during the Civil War. Because that time they have voice of Biafra for external service. They probably have Radio Biafra for internal service. Radio Biafra, they carry it along wherever they're going. But the voice of Biafra transmitter is stationed inside there. That is the transmitter, the Bia Ojuku and Okokun they use during the Civil War. From there, we move to the announcer's room of the voice of Biafra, the particular room where Ojuku and Okokun they stays. The funny thing during the Civil War, while they were broadcasting from that particular room, they will be telling the public that they are broadcasting from Enuguku, but they are broadcasting from Momaya. This Okokun they speaks Hausa, he speaks Igbo, he speaks Yoruba, he speaks English, he speaks French. While they were broadcasting, they be broadcasting. They were broadcasting from Enugu, but they don't know that they were broadcasting from Omaha until towards the end of the war. Omaha was captured, including this area. And from there, we come out through the escape route of the voice of Biafra to the outside exhibition. At the outside exhibition, we have military hardware. All the things, all the war weapons we have outside, all of them were real weapons. None of them is a replica. They were either used by Nigeria or they were used by Biafrans. Divided into three sections. We have the Army section, we have the Air Force section, and we have the Naval section over there. At the Army section, we have different types of armored cars. We have the walls fabricated by Biafra engineers called the RAP. RAP means research and the production unit of Biafra. It's a unit made up of engineers. That time, their work is to fabricate war weapons because all their rules for importation of arms were closed down by Nigerians. So they started fabricating war weapons. They fabricated the armored cars we are seeing here today. And these armored cars made by Biafrans are called Biafran Red Devils. It's not only the armored cars they fabricated. They also fabricated what you call Obunigwe. The one on his vision is called Flying Obunigwe, meaning muscular. They fabricated different types of Obunigwe during the Civil War. They fabricated the trap type, they fabricated the Ojuku bucket, and the one we're seeing here today is called Flying Obunigwe. It's not only that, they also fabricated what you call Biafra oil cooking pot. It's a mini refinery. That's what they use in refining the oil diesel in driving these armored tanks. Now, they also fabricated what you call Bufa. Bufa is an anti aircraft gun. Now, at the Air Force section, we have different types of aircraft there. We have the uh, the, the, the Illusion 28 Bomber and Fighter is a Russian made plane brought to Nigeria side by Egyptian pilot, used by Nigerians against Biafra. We also have the small one under it. It's called Small Bomber Aircraft, Minicon. That plane is a uh, is Sweden made. It's a sports plane before it was converted to a fighter aircraft plane. It was used by Biafrans. That was the plane that nearly change the course of the war in favor of Biafra because it has advantage over this big illusion. Small in size, it has no route to fly. It can hide under a tree. Biafra is called Biafra and baby. Nigeria is called Biafra and mosquito. Now at the naval end there we have the assault boat. The assault boat was fabricated by the Federal Ministry of Force under Brigadier Adekule, the Black Scorpion. We also have the NNS Bunny, Nigerian naval ship. That ship was manufactured in the year 1966 by a Liverpool British shipbuilder. And during the Civil War in Nigeria, it was used by Nigerians along the Bonnet sector. We brought it here in three parts with this big crane. Then Nigeria shipbuilders from Portacourt came here and assembled them together. Now, it has an entrance for, for a visitor to go inside. When you go inside, you walk around. It also has an exit for you to come out. When you come out, you see where the captain of the ship stays. So in brief, that's what we have in this museum.
Thank you very much. I'll bet the negative impact the Biafra war had on the lives of average Nigerians, some still insist on a referendum. Take a look. My name is uh, Mboji Leko Wayanest. Uh, I live right here in Abakwa Torwaita. Uh, the issue of Biafra, I think, has been an issue for quite some time. And from my own little understanding, I believe that the people really deserve to be granted that right to be on their own because I know that even given, going by UN convention people are supposed to have the right to self-determination so Biafra case should not be an exemption more so for the fact that you see that in most cases when people are forced to live together when there is this heterogeneity what one may call something lesser than a nation there is always that problem of uh, agitation for one thing or the other and that kind of a feeling of uh, maybe marginalization or something of that nature. So I believe Biafra should be given an opportunity to be on her own. That's my own personal belief anyway. Let the federal government be... Let, them be, let the government be reasonable enough. These people really have that right of self-determination. So federal government should engage them in dialogue and probably grant them what they are asking for because it should be their right going by international conventions after we hear about Brexit, British exit and so on. So Biafra shouldn't be an exception. Federal government should engage them in dialogue. If it can succeed in making them forget this agitation, okay. But if the federal government cannot succeed in making them continue with this agitation, then it should be granted because it is their personal right. My name is uh, Mustafa Nuruddin. I believe the Agitation by the Biafra is uh, at this stage of Nigeria history. I don't think it is important for them to have Biafra for now. Because looking at the history of Nigeria since the Civil War, what the Igbo nation needs at this stage is a restructured federalism. Because the agitation will not take us anywhere. Especially when we look at other African countries like South Sudan. They have break away, but up to now they are still having a lot of issues. So I believe it's, it, we, what we need is dialogue between the political elites. Let us have a federalism where everybody can be given a sense of belonging. Look at the recent uh, movement that has been made by uh, the vice, uh, vice uh, president, Yemi Osimbajo, to the Nanja Delta and some states in the uh, southeast. So it, it has shown that Nigerians are peace-loving people. So if they are called upon, I believe the only thing they need is that they want to have a sense of belonging in Nigeria. This country belongs to everybody. So it should not be an issue of some people feeling that they have been sidelined. My name is Nzaga Richard Tesu. Uh, concerning the issue of Biafra, um, the separation of the South-South from uh, the rest part of Nigeria, I don't think it's an advisable issue. It, should, it shouldn't be, uh, it is not encouraged, uh, encourageable at all. It is not something that should be encourageable. They have the right to have the independent nation, but Nigeria is, should be a, a united country, not a divided country. Any factor that will divide us is not encourageable at all. I don't think it's advisable. Uh, actually, Biafra is, has become a household name. It's been there for long, and now, recently, the agitation for Biafra is on again. And my take is that Biafra should be reinstated. Because if you look at what is happening, you discover that many people are agitating for them to be free. Because what is happening in this country, we feel that we are being intimidated. We are not being treated as one. So I think Biafra should be reinstated so that we can go. In the issue of Biafra, I can say, I can categorically say that Biafra have come to stay. Because even Buhari cannot stop Biafra. You understand? 
Why cannot stop Biafra? Why I say so is that, as in Biafra have been in existence for so many years, you understand? And I don't think that he can stop it by force. So I will advise Buhari to, as in, to conduct what we call referendum, you understand? So that people can, can vote whether Biafra will stay or not, you understand? You cannot beat a baby and, tell, and hold that baby not to cry. It's not possible. You understand? So I call on Mr. President Mohamed Buhari to immediate the reads and the can. I'm giving him one month. You understand? One month. If that is not done, we will have no choice than to take law into our hand. Because I don't know the kind of this country is this. He's running this country as a dictatorship. And we are not in the military regime. We are in democracy. So Buhari should obey the law. He should obey the constitution. You understand? That is my take. I think what we need as Nigerians is to see ourselves as one Nigeria. And that is exactly what go one for, for, we know, for us to be one. And uh, to the fun. all leaders, all people from all walks of life or any part of Nigeria, we should see ourselves as one. It's when there is, uh, uh, when there are people who don't see us as being one, put up certain attitude, that's where these hate species are coming from. We want to have our own republic. Let Biafra go. That is my own stand. Whether we are going to survive or let us go. We are not going to survive or let us go. It's due time we will go. We have been intimidated too much in this country. And we are calling ourselves One Nigeria. We are not One Nigeria. Why? Because the Fulanese hate men, what they are doing in South East, and nobody is saying anything about it. We are not Nigerians. Since they are not giving us equal rights as Nigerians, let Biafrans go so that there will be peace in the country. The amalgamation in 1914 expired in 2013, December 31st. So the agreement has expired. And our leader, Nandekanu, in um, um, High Court, Federal High Court, they told us that Biafra, uh, Nigeria is expired, which everybody knows that Nigeria expired in 2013, December 31st. That's why we agitate to have Biafra. And it's our right. Nigeria should grant us Biafra so that peace will reign in this country. Without granting us Biafra, there will be no... Since, since when I was born, I was learning about Biafra. And I, I am in, in support of Biafra. And I like Biafra so much. Even my people are suffering. Look at all bad, bad, bad roads everywhere. No, no good, good market. No good road. No good vehicle. To me, I like yeah, so, so that Igbos we we get get their own freedom. So that Igbos we live peacefully. So that Igbos we live peacefully. So that this this yeah yeah our our state will be the among uh, of the best states. So it has been long after yeah, yeah, ha, ha, has been existing. It has been long, not now, about 60 years yeah, ago. If the, people are, if the people say they are tired, they, want to, they, they don't want to, they, that, that um, um, issue of Nigeria, they don't want to belong to Nigeria anymore, they should allow them to go. Isn't it? They should allow them, allow them to go. Because um, this forced marriage it, it will bring problem. You say that they allow them to go peacefully, or you know, God, if, to me, it's peaceful is peacefully is is is, uh, is the best. Instead of uh, two 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 people fighting, they should allow them so that they will go peacefully. They may tr they may strive on their own. They may not, but. If they, if, they, if they see that they want to go, they should allow them to go. There is no force in marriage. They are France. They are looking for their, they are seeking for their own republic. It is not their wish to do that. But the country they are into, Nigeria, has tired them. The people that fought a war, fought the Afra war without, without valuable ammunition, with, with a um, um, local gun, with a firewood, with a local, local something, and they can be able to reach to a certain extent. Why can't they, why can't they excel? 
when they are, they are, they are allowed to go. So they, are, they have nothing to lack. The Biafra you are hearing about, I believe, will be NS Dubai, NS Japan, if they are given opportunity to be. I'm, I'm very sure by the grace of God, if Biafra will be allowed to exercise their freedom, I'm sure that uh, things will move on, things will go well, things will go very well. And even some other people that, uh, that, that don't like Biafra, people that does not, uh, uh, that don't, uh, that does not uh, agree on Biafra, by the time they will see the way Biafra are going on, the way things have been being splendid, yeah, I'm sure that they will, they will like to even join Biafra. I don't even mind to say that if they would like to join Biafra, let them join Biafra. Because I believe let's just try Biafra and see how it goes. I'm very sure that uh, yeah, Biafra, they will, they will do well. They will do well as a nation. They will do well. So I'm, I'm very sure by the grace of God. That has been the prayer of every Biafra person, every Biafran personality. That has been our expectation, our dream, our future and our wish. So I plead on the, on the government to please call Biafra for reconciliation for their freedom. So that's what I'm, that's my opinion. Yes, my name is Ogadan Reynolds. Um, I live here in Abuja. And um, concerning the Biafra, um, if they should be called um, for dialogue, it's okay because one thing we're actually looking for in Nigeria is peace. And anything that has to do with dialoguing, it actually brings peace. So, when the two people come to the table and talk about, okay, this person explain his own side, and then this person explain his own side, I think it's, it's, it will even promote peace. Though, by the grace of God, if it later grants them, uh, I, I feel so much that they will be able to thrive as a nation because most of the resources, as in most of the things, like if you talk about Aba, you come to talk about um, a, a state like Aba, which most of the things that, um, that we have today in, in Nigeria, in fact, I think they produce from there. Yes, so I, 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 I believe strongly that they'll be able to strive as a nation because they are, they are, they are creative people. In my humble opinion, history will forever remain the greatest teacher of all. The federal government and those agitating for a referendum should come together and dialogue, come up with an amicable solution beyond rhetoric that would drive development to the southeast and give a sense of belonging to every Nigerian. I have faith that Nigeria, irrespective of tribal, regional and religious differences, we will remain one nation and happily so. Watch extended clips from this episode on TOSTVNetwork.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at The Osasu Show and at TOSTVNetwork on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Read my article titled Towards 2019 Elections Beyond the Usual Suspects on OsasuIgmanadion.com and follow me on social media at OsasuIgmanadion on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter as well. I'll see you same time, same place next week and until then, Take very good care of yourself. God bless you.